this point, you can probably recite the official story about DACA by heart. DACA recipients are dreamers, the best America has to offer. They're all future scientists and humanitarians. If anything, you ought to be deported in their place. We'll meet 21-year-old DACA recipient Abigail Hernandez, who's recently arrested for making terroristic threats, allegedly, against high school students. She posted, apparently, on Facebook two weeks ago that she would go to East High School in Rochester, New York, and, quote, shoot all y'all expletives. Sadly, we imagine this arrest could hurt her otherwise excellent chances of winning a Nobel Prize, but we'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, out in California, in Oakland, the mayor is in open insurrection against the federal government, not exaggerating. On Saturday, Democratic Mayor Libby Schaff issued a press release warning locals that, based on several of her sources, she believed ICE, the federal immigration administration, was about to launch immigration raids in the city of Oakland. The press release advised illegal residents to, quote, prepare, not panic, and advised them that business owners and schools were not allowed to assist ICE. Cesar Vargas is an illegal immigrant. He works as a lawyer in New York City, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Vargas, thanks for coming on. Tucker, thank you so much for having me. So um, how can a state actively work against federal law? Isn't that kind of how we had a civil war? Well, what's the problem? Do we have a problem that a local city is protecting its, its residents, a local city is pushing against the overbearing power of the federal government. You know, the mayor is not saying, let's protect the rapists, let's protect the child molesters. The, the mayor is simply saying, we're going to protect our residents, regardless of their immigration status. We're going to okay, protect but, our hardworking but you, residents. But hold on, hold on. You're, 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 to the, to the let, me just, let me just be clear. I'm not attacking any of the so called DACA recipients, people here illegally personally. I don't know them. Maybe some are bad people, maybe they're all great people. They're but the point people. is, they're here illegally in violation of federal law. California is a state. You can't, the state of California is not allowed to actively subvert federal law. Then it's not really acting in concert with the other 49 states. That's an active insurrection. How am I missing something? Well, the Constitution does provide basic rights, but the also Constitution allows the states to create more rights for the residents. Right no. here, we're okay, seeing the to, city to, no, of I know, Oakland look, I know you say you're a lawyer, but residents, and okay. not necessarily saying we're going to detain you, we're going to deport you. If you're working hard, you can stay here. Anyone no, no, who's committed a crime, the, okay. I can still operate in no, but Oakland. But now you're and getting into the, the look. Now you're getting into what we want to be true. I'm just saying what is true. Here's what is true as of now, and until the Congress acts, it's true. going to be true. No, the Constitution has been interpreted by the Supreme Court for more than 200 years to say that states cannot act against federal law. That is one of Absolutely. the oldest precepts in American law. And if you say you're a lawyer, I'm sure you know that. So the point I'm making is this. These people are here illegally. Congress can change that. They can legalize them if they want. But right now, their presence is in violation of federal law. The mayor of an American city is saying, you may not participate with federal law enforcement. You have to oppose federal law. That is not workable. You can't have that. That is an act of insurrection against the federal government. Do you, do you see this? Do you care? Well, do you know what because, I mean? Just because it's federal law doesn't mean it's, it's right, doesn't mean it's constitutional. The Supreme Court has ruled, and federal courts have ruled, that one, the president does not have the authority to use racial discrimination to target immigrants. One, it's unconstitutional for the president to target sanctuary cities by no, no, defunding you're, their government. You're, you're, you're and actually also missing. The federal, no, the federal neither courts one have of the against, on, against I, I'm sorry, unreasonable I can't search let you, and seizures from I, ICE targeting immigrants. Look, I don't want to have check right. your bar license or something. The protects but, immigrants okay. as well. Okay. The federal government has a right to enforce federal law. Federal immigration yes. law has not been overturned by the Supreme Court. Please don't make up facts on the show. Those laws are still enforced. And the federal government, by definition, has a law, has a right to enforce them. The states do not have a right to subvert them. There's no argument about that. So what you're seeing is something that cannot stand. I mean, the federal government in previous decades has sent federal troops into states when they do stuff like this. So do you understand the fire that they're playing with, or is it just, it's cool because you think illegals should be able to stay here? No, That I seems just to think, be your core I position. Just, I just think that throughout the judiciary history, we have shown that the states and the cities are the laboratory of democracy. The states have such power to do much more than the federal government has done. And what we're seeing here is the city saying, we're going to push it back against our overbearing government. We have done that. The king You're getting used your to bumper stickers confused. That's like whatever. And that's why we had, colonial you have, 
Okay, you know, I'm sorry. Look at this. I'm sorry. We I'm not allowing you to teach American history on my show because put, you're, you, know, you, you failed the course. the rights of, okay, you, the of is, colonists. Okay, and that's why right, we had a colonial right, war. We had right, a revolutionary okay. because we pushed against a tyrant. We pushed against well, First of all, I mean, no offense, but I, I, the I of wish you wouldn't say people. we. Hold on. Since you're not a citizen, actually, so you don't get to say we. I, I'm sorry. You just don't. Well, okay, I'm an American. Citizenship does not make me an American. And I think values make you what it means to be an American. I don't know who told you that that's... No, actually, you become an American when you become an American citizen. That's the definition of it. I'm not attacking you as a person. I'm sure no, you're a great course, person. I'm sure you're smart. We're just different in that I'm an American and you're not. And you're that's just a legal citizen. question. We're both Americans, though. Right. No, that's not true. But let me ask you this, though. So Oakland's got all these other problems. And I'm not staying up late at night worried about whether illegal aliens get arrested in Oakland, okay? I'm not, to be honest. What I'm really worried about, though, is the people who run Oakland care more about people there illegally than they care about the thousands of homeless that live on their streets, the hundreds of homeless children. The U.N. went to Oakland and said, this is cruelty, what you're doing to your homeless. And yet they're spending time and money on behalf of people who aren't even allowed to be here. Do you see a kind of weird priority in that? Well, I don't see a, a weirdness that the city of Oakland is protecting all its residents regardless of their immigration status. What we're seeing now, if you want to talk about homeless people, well, I'm talking about the Trump uh, tax reform that's benefiting the wealthy and the 1% and give them more tax break. Those, that tax break should go into helping those homeless people. Should I'm, be going I'm sorry. To I mean, that's so silly. I'm beginning to think I don't think you should become a citizan. I mean, no offense or anything. It's not, <laughs> I would be happy to have dinner with you, but Let's that's go just for that's dinner not in a, a nice Mexican restaurant. Not a... <laughs> Very smart point. Caesar, thank you for joining us. I thank appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tucker, for having this me. This video comes with a trigger warning. In it, you will see a white woman telling a group of people of color to be quiet so she can white-splain to them. Please have any small children cover their ears. In fact, you should probably cover your own, too. Watch this. For a long time, we've been fighting the fight for the dreamers. My colleagues... Not dreamers! Not dreamers! Not dreamers! Or do you just want to shout? Yes, 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 I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You do not. You don't know what you're talking about. The revolution always consumes itself. Now, why were those people so mad at Pelosi? Well, they're furious that she's negotiating with the president to protect DACA beneficiaries from being deported. Instead, they want a total and immediate amnesty for all 11 million, maybe 15 million, no one really knows, illegal immigrants currently in this country. Avon Seha is an illegal immigrant. He's the founder of Undocumedia. He joins us tonight. Avon, thanks for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me, Tucker. I am undocumented, a DACA beneficiary, and actually born a crime uh, when I was immigrating here at nine months old. Huh. So I guess what I find so striking about that video and about a lot of other things that I've seen in the past few weeks is the lack of gratitude and the hostility from people who are really getting a pretty good deal from the United States, apparently, people who are here illegally, breaking U.S. law, benefiting in a lot of ways from U.S. society, which is the richest in the world, the most orderly, the cleanest, the fairest and yet seem hostile toward the United States. I never hear a single person say, you know what, thank you. Why not, I wonder. I, b I believe that undocumented immigrants, DACA recipients, are simply reacting uh, to what's continued being, continuing to be done over years, and that is they're talking about us, but they're not talking with us. They are not including us in the conversations, and this is something that's going to be addressed. Both parties will be held accountable. Uh, people uh, have something to refer to, records, uh, to under indicate how promising these agreements can be, and that's voting record. We're going to be holding people on both sides of the party who at some point may have voted against us, and that's all we have. That's the only premise whoa, we have whoa, whoa, for wait, how wait, we wait, Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so, so down. You're issuing a threat, and I want to understand what that threat means. You're saying as an illegal here, is not, you're not a U.S. citizen. You're saying you and other non-U.S. citizens are going to hold U.S. citizens accountable for not being nice enough to non-U.S. citizens? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that these elected officials are there to represent all constituents, including undocumented immigrants that live in these communities. And although we do not vote them in directly, we do take great part in our community and also ask to be represented. We are paying taxes, we are contributing to the community, and we just ask for representation. No, no, what you just, and by the way, 
I've always been very pro-immigrant and am in some ways still and, and pro-immigration actually. You're making me very anti-immigration by what you're saying right now because of its tone, but also because of the threat you just issued to people who don't see it your way. You're not a U.S. citizen. The U.S. government exists to serve the needs and protect the needs of U.S. citizens. It does not exist to protect needs of non-U.S. citizens. Do you see the distinction? I think all countries are that way. All of them. I also understand. Do you understand, uh, you know, taxation without representation, something that this found country was founded on? I believe we are paying taxes. I believe we deserve to be represented. I'm not issuing any threat other than we are going to go ahead and no longer allow people to make agreements that jeopardize our community behind our back. We want to be protected. We want to have relief that includes our parents, our brothers, our uncles who don't fit the typical dreamer narrative per se. But why do you have a right to demand anything? I mean, if I sh and by the way, let me just be really clear, for the fifth time, I'm sympathetic to a lot of the DACA people because they didn't choose to come here illegally. But it, I'm more sympathetic to American citizens because I am one. And I have something in common with them because they're Americans too. And so I don't understand on what grounds you make these demands. If I show up in someone else's country and say, you know what, I demand to have a voice in the political system here, I demand benefits, I demand respect, it's a buzz off, pal, leave. Like you have no position from which to demand those things. Do you see what I mean? No, I understand. The context of the video that you were referring to, those are DACA beneficiaries, 800,000, which are now in limbo as a result of the loss of DACA or the threat to it, and there isn't anything happening in the next six months. So they are reacting to that. These are people who are very much well involved in our communities. They are teaching our children. They are police officers, firemen, paramedics. Even in the recent uh, hurricane hits, uh, they were putting their lives on the line to save other people. No, and nowhere I mean, that's did just, they question, that's just are you nonsense. a citizen? It's just totally are you a legal non it's just resident? nonsense. It's just nonsense okay yeah some of them are great no, people some true. of them some of them are criminals and drug dealers they're people okay so not all of them are future medal of honor recipients let's stop with the propaganda i'm asking a much bigger question about what citizenship means and about the rights of people from other countries to demand political influence and money from a country that's not theirs and i'm just saying it's a kind of a weird posture an entitled posture for you to take like i demand this really i, I look around are you following me? Again, they are they are contributing to this country, and they deserve to but be some represented. Are, some are. They okay, have so been here for years. They are not new, and that that applies to every population. I know plenty of good citizens. I know plenty of bad citizens. If you want to go by that I, narrative, I agree with that. I, and no matter no, no, what, but I agree there, with there are you. people in everywhere. But they're citizens and non-citizens. That's the distinction that the left is seeking to erase. We're all the same, and my point is no. The point of a government is to look out for the citizens. That's why a citizen is different from a non-citizen. You are subject to the laws of, but also benefiting from the protections of, a government. I mean, I don't understand. So like everyone in the world who wants to come to the United States can just show up, bet, you know, go on benefits, reap the benefits of our society. Like, why would we allow that? Nobody's actually doing that. Actually, there is no line right now for anyone in this country to get behind. There are forums, et cetera, applications that people can apply for from their respective countries. What we're talking about is millions of people who are already here, 800,000 DACA beneficiaries who are currently in limbo. These are people who, there, there's no line to get behind. Just to put things in perspective, the immigration system is currently processing applications from 1995, something we have no control over, just to show what's okay, going but on. That's, but that's really not you know, up to you to like or dislike because you don't have grounds for that. And look, I would, I would concede that the DACA, some of the DACA kids are a little bit different because they came here as small children, as you did. But for the 11 to 15 million people who snuck in the country and are using forged documents to work, undercutting the wages of American citizens, on what basis do they get to tell me as an American citizen, I want this, I demand that? Like, what? Why would a normal society take that seriously? You have no right to demand anything if you're one of those people. Do you?